Good day, everybody. Meteorologist Robert Spetta here with WesternPacificWeather.com. It is currently the 26th of May, 2011, approximately 1400 Japan Standard Time. We're in around 1300 Philippine Time, or approximately 05 Zulu for those of you worldwide watching this update. I want to Pat here for covering me the last uh, week or so. I've actually been off on business here, so haven't been able to make these updates. So thank you very much for uh, filling in here and continuing to inform everybody out here about this very intense tropical uh, storm out here, or excuse me, a typhoon. Current winds from JTWC have it sustained at 115, gusting up to 130 knots currently. That's a very intense uh, tropical storm out here. Actually, JMA also has it at severe intensity. Their winds are a little bit less sustained currently, at 95 knots would gust up to 135 knots with 930 uh, HPA pressure near the center of the system. So a very deep system. I would not be surprised if JMA increases that wind speed on their next warning here. Uh, it continues to deepen here due to a lot of the favorable conditions out here. An upper level ridge is sitting right over top of it. And also noting very uh, warm sea surface temperatures here out in the Philippine Sea above 80 degrees. Actually in some areas upwards of 90 degrees here especially closer to the coast. So uh, all the ingredients here are here for for in some intense uh, intensification here over the next coming hours. But uh, noting here, let's look into some of the microwave imagery, a very well-defined eye is being located in the center of the system, indicating that it is very organized right now. Some very clear organization going on here with these overall rain bands, very cir circular around the system that's indicating everything that and pointing towards the fact that the system is rapidly intensification, very well organized. I did mention earlier that there's an upper level uh, ridge sitting over top of this that's providing the the exhaust a law for the system to basically pump a lot of that warm moist air that latent heat out of the ocean move it upwards through the warm core low here to a law and allow it to continue to deepen uh, actually showing the visible satellite imagery here this one is less than 30 minutes old you can see a lot of the higher cloud tops here near the center of the system JTWC actually has wave heights out of above 30 feet here near the center of the system so that's about the equivalent of about a two-story building out here where these wave heights are near the center of this so real good news News. Don't see any reports of any ship obs out here, so it looks like most of the people got out of the way that are out to sea in the Philippines here. But if any fishermen or anybody decides to go to the beach here along the east coast of Luzon and Visayas here over the next coming days, probably a very bad idea. Riptide out here is going to be very significant as well, especially areas near jetties and uh, basically uh, bays and non such. A riptide is a very dangerous thing here, so if anybody does decide they want to go out here and go swimming or catch some of the surf associated with the storm, a very bad idea. I'm not sure if Agassiz is putting out those warnings here but I strongly suggest against doing so if you're here along the East Coast watching this here but just noting these are actually all ship obs out here most people did get out of the way as far as the ships that are reporting here um, always hear uh, bad news of some fishermen always trying to get a last ke minute catch in here but definitely a very dangerous situation out here as far as the swell and the uh, outer rain bands actually associated with this which I feel is going to be actually the most dangerous uh, aspect of the system on the Philippines here is a lot of these outer rain bands located right out in this region here. But the noting once it starts to move towards the northwest here and clipping the east coast of northeast Luzon, specifically Apari here, Santa uh, Ana here along the east coast here as well, and basically the Sierra Madre region here, uh, same area that just saw all those heavy rains from Tropical Storm Airy out here or Babing here. Uh, is can continue to get some heavy rainfalls here and also noting um, as with all land falling uh, tropical systems out here there is a potential of some tornadic activity here along the west coast here I actually saw some videos on YouTube here after tropical storm uh, Chiding or Bibing here passed along Taiwan some very uh, large uh, tornadoes moved through the center of uh, Taipei out there so even with the smaller systems you can still see these large tornadoes and with this one I would largely suspect that there could be the possibility of some out here along the east coast and even as far west as Manila here I do have them in the box here there is that potential there so don't always rule that out and don't think that you're not seeing the landfall of this system so you're in the clear here there's still kind of a dangerous situation here especially with uh, the afternoon heating and the afternoon and the evening hours the upward vertical motion is going to be enhanced by the system even farther out to the west here so that's going to increase the uh, number of thunderstorms out here and you're actually starting to see that here along the Sias right now just by this afternoon heating 
combined with the upward vertical motion with this system. So kind of a dangerous situation here. So don't think you're out of the woods just because you're to the west of the system. It still could bring a heavy amount of precipitation causing widespread flooding out here. And also just noting the fact of some of that severe weather in these outer rain bands. So where is this system going to be going? Well, I'll start with the models here. Here showing the 18 Zulu model run model consensus here. Also overlaid with JTWC's uh, warning here as well. And they're really coming on the east side of all the models here. And I really kind of agree with JTWC. Just I would suspect it a little bit farther towards the west. Just slightly. But right in the midst of all this. Okinawa definitely going to see uh, some very intense winds out of this. I would not uh, be surprised if they saw winds above 100 knots as the system moved over that island here in the coming days. But noting that in the long range here. I do think that it will be remain southeast of Honshu here as it trucks off towards the northeast and starts to get wrapped up in the westerlies and become the extra tropical but I do want to mention it's going to continue to be a very strong extra tropical system up here so it could bring some heavy rains here to much of Honshu specifically the Fukushima Daiichi region but we'll get into that here in a little bit more in a, in a moment here but this is just showing the model consensus here I want to bring up specifically GFS in the wind field associated with uh, that model GFS one of my favorite models to use out here but just noting that they're showing the highest amount of this wind field rating here with winds above 100 knots here in the orange extending all the way up past Okinawa here according to this model but most of the uh, highest winds do remain offshore here from uh, much of Luzon here but just noting that this also does not take in the fact of funneling area so if you are in a valley you could see some increase in winds and this is just purely winds not rain and also this is purely straight line winds and it does not take an account of some uh, basically destructive winds associated with thunderstorms in the outer rain bands as well so I just want to mention that here this is just a tool I like to use here but just showing some kind of the path and the swath of where the highest amount of these winds are going to be and of course it would not be one of my updates here if I did not take into account the streamline analysis one of my favorite products to use when forecasting typhoons tropical cyclones and hurricanes all alike here now basically I like to follow the overall background flow as shown right in here and it's just showing basically where the winds are going to tank this system here and kind of the troughing of low pressure right out here I do always mention that tropical storms like to basically run downhill it's kind of like water uh, just flowing downhill here and this is indicating some troughing right in here so I do expect, suspect this to continue to track off towards the north here, be eventually recorp curving to the northeast here in the coming days, and moving off towards the northeast, southeast of Honshu. As right in here, you can kind of see a little ridge setting up here. That's this uh, anticyclonic rotation right in here, or clockwise rotation. And I suspect it's going to go south of this. Actually, a lot of the models are kind of uh, picking up on a little dip here, just off to the east here, in the long range here, about a 30th. And that's really due to this upper level ridge setting up here over Honshu here. And I really do believe that's going to be the big savior for uh, much of that tsunami stricken area up here along the east coast of Honshu is this upper level ridge setting up here and basically uh, allowing the system to move southeast of mainland Japan. It does not save Okinawa though. Still suspect that they're going to see some high winds here and actually looking at the uh, warning from JTWC and when the uh, storm passes over uh, Okinawa here, uh, JTWC saying winds about 110 gusting up to 135 knots here. I suspect it would probably be right around 100 knots sustained here. And if it does take this exact track shown right in here, that would put Okinawa in the right front quadrant here. So all my viewers there definitely could be a slightly dangerous situation. Now good news, Okinawa is built to withstand uh, typhoons out here. So as long as people basically secure all their objects outside and remain inside, uh, they should be safe here. I do note that uh, people on the bases there in Kadena still uh, in T-Core 4. If you're on the base there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Basically, destructive winds are suspected in the next 72 hours there. So just basically start getting your stuff wrapped up. I would suspect it gets gradually bumped up by today up to T-Core 3 and then by in the coming days all the way up to a 2 and 1. So uh, once it gets to 1, and for people that don't know, that's basically that everybody just telling people on the bases there uh, destructive winds are on station. So just kind of the countdown here, but just showing JTWC warning to continue kind of go on that track just southeast of Honshu as well as we were noting earlier here but they do keep the storm off the east coast of Luzon here in the near term I do want to know Pegasus warning I'm not showing it here because I really don't agree with it all due respect to Pegasus I just think they're kind of being very very cautious with having the storm making landfall along eastern Luzon here I really don't agree with that I do know they have signal force one out for much of the east coast here and signal force two out for much of Luzon as well here but really just don't agree with them having landfall here so actually uh, moving over to JMA they're really kind of in alignment with JTWC 
with the storm remaining off the east coast of uh, Luzon here and eventually recurving up towards Okinawa. Now they're saying it's going to go on the right side of Okinawa, which would be very good news here if it does take this track shown right in here. The higher winds would be on the right front quadrant, given the fact that it also will be speeding up here upwards of uh, 10 knots. So that kind of would add 10 knots to the forward motion on the right side and decrease uh, the wind speeds overall of 10 knots on the uh, backwards motion on the left side here. So just uh, some good news if it does take the track from uh, JMA here but overall though that swath could swing from either side here and we're really not going to know the exact location of landfall until about 24 hours prior here even less than that there could be some wobbles but just given the fact that this storm is going to bruise to do typhoon strength winds on Okinawa I think that is the uh, one of the main factors here. And also do want to mention uh, the fact of storm surge as well as on Okinawa as the system does start to work its way up here. So another one of those cases where just stay away from the beaches um, and also definitely stay away from uh, some of those areas where you're going to see those higher storm surges here. If it does make landfall on the basically left side Okinawa, surge is going to be very high along the southern periphery of the island here. So anybody uh, down in that region definitely would have to listen to your warnings for those local warnings from uh, JMA and if you're on the base is there's local base warnings here and just ending with my thoughts on it from westernpacificweather.com here uh, just showing the morning of each one of these uh, plots here just uh, the morning of the 26th here uh, the morning of the 27th I do is suspected just to be off the east coast of Luzon here and then by the morning of the 28th starting to make landfall around Okinawa and all the way up to the morning of the 30th just off the southern east coast of the Kanto Plain here just my thoughts very vague doesn't really explain the exact track here but just uh, kind of getting that the fact that I don't don't suspect this to make landfall along the east coast of Luzon here and don't expect it to make landfall along eastern Hong and lastly I want to give a quick shout out to some of my uh, friends out here in Thailand uh, I know they're doing some sailing out here uh, just west of Thailand around the Phuket area and I just want to mention uh, skies look clear out here looking at a westerly wind out in this entire region as it all is starting to get drawn into the storm way out to the east so still affecting your weather out here in the South China Sea all the way out to the Bay of Bengal here so uh, some pretty good sailing weather out here though some afternoon thunderstorms you see popping up here but nothing really too convective or too big going on out here could see some gusty winds with some of these storms but overall basically out of the west about five to ten knots and that is all for right now i want to uh, thank pat once again for covering me while i was gone here we'll continue to have these updates in the coming days as we continue to watch this storm here this very strong storm here so everybody out there in the philippines and in uh, much of japan here and even taiwan please uh, continue to watch your local warnings here i do want to mention this is not a official forecast here uh, especially my graphics here all not official forecast but I do want to uh, just mention make sure you take uh, the warnings off seriously especially if you are getting evacuated out of low-lying areas I saw in the news here actually some of the areas on the east coast of Luzon here are getting evacuated so really good news coming out of there out of the uh, the government there and Pagasa as well so if you have any questions comments or suggestions you can always post them here at the website you can email me here at uh, Western or excuse me Westpac weather at gmail.com and also at storm2k.org plenty of meteorological discussion going on with the system all those links are below in the description box if you are curious or want to check any of those out so thanks again for listening everybody have a great day and stay safe bye